Hello there, my fellow Opposite Day friends, and welcome to another video in our Warhammer Humor series. This is the place where we narrate and describe the funnier side of Warhammer, including, more recently, alternate universes. Today we arrive at the third, and sadly final episode, from Brighthammer 40k. In many ways the complete opposite of Warhammer 40k. For this episode we're gonna take a look at the evil Tau Empire, alongside a few other funny opposites I didn't mention last time, including the Tyranids, the Emperor and more. I'm your host, the bright happy narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Once upon a time, about 6000 years ago, an automated imperial survey probe discovered the Tau. Finding a race of plain dwelling aliens who had just mastered fire and lived in simple hunter-gatherer societies. An expedition was sent to offer the Xenos the friendship of the Imperium, but a sudden and unexplained interstellar storm of immense power enveloped the sector, cutting it away from the rest of the galaxy. The storms have only recently abated, and a follow-up survey long afterwards has shocked the Imperium. In six millennia, the Tau had been transformed from a peaceful but primitive civilization to an authoritarian, expansionist, star-spanning empire, possessing advanced technology and insatiable bloodlust. Somehow it was the Exodite Eldar who had come across the young Tau and proceeded to manipulate and mold them into creatures more like themselves. For centuries the Exodites had set various petty Tau kingdoms and city-states against one another, plunging the world into chaos and nearly wiping out the race. But then the Exodites changed their minds and decided to unite the Tau under one rule. Using heretical bioengineering, the Exodites bred a subspecies of Tau which possessed the pheromone glands of an insectoid alien race, granting them absolute control over the Tau. These so-called ethereals became the Exodite mouthpieces in Tau society, and with the help of Eldar technology quickly built a brutal world government before spreading into nearby star systems. Thus, Tau society is divided into a very strict hierarchy. The Earth caste are the lowliest of the Tau, slaving away in terrible conditions to keep the Empire supplied with the war gear and supplies that fuel their aggression. The luckiest of the Earth caste get to work on miserable farms and live in hopeless drudgery. The unlucky ones are sent to hellish factories, where maimed workers are thrown out in the streets to die. The water caste are derided as untrustworthy schemers, merchants and diplomats, who cheat and swindle those they come across. They mostly prey on two trusting human societies bordering the Tau Empire, selling malfunctioning and downright dangerous equipment for ridiculous prices, and then laughing when their customers are killed or crippled when their purchases blow up in their face. Even worse, the water caste also attempt to convince human worlds to renounce the Emperor's benevolent rule for the empty promises of Tau society, bringing in new worlds of unwitting slaves for the Tau Empire. For that reason, the Imperium has forbidden its citizens from dealing with the Tau. The air caste are haughty and cowardly, preferring to rain destruction from afar above their enemies rather than engage in a fair fight. They provide pilots and crews for the Tau navies and build the vessels that allow the Empire to expand. Still, the rest of the Tau view them, at best, with distrust. The Firecast are close to the top of the Tau's social hierarchy. These are burly and short-tempered creatures, and ostensibly the defenders of the Empire, but in reality they are the backbone of the Tau police state. In combat they howl with barely contained bloodlust, and they are known for using prisoners of war as target practice, that is, when they take prisoners at all. But at the end of the day, all Tau live in constant terror of the ethereal caste, so named because they appear to be both everywhere and nowhere at once, an intangible presence in Tau society. 
these Tao devote their lives to preserving the order of the Tao Empire, by operating extensive surveillance networks which keep every Tao mindful of what they say, even when they think they're alone. If an Ethereal suspects a Tao of treason, they will order that Tao to kill himself, an order that is obeyed instantly. They are a paranoid and suspicious group, and they have a grim, dark view of the universe, believing that the Tao are surrounded by hostile aliens and beset from within by treacherous elements of their own population. They hold that there is no good actions possible in such a galaxy, and instead choose the lesser evil required for survival. For now, the Imperium has reluctantly steeled itself for war with the Tau, and has prepared its worlds on the eastern fringe for wave after wave of berserk fire warriors. But the Emperor still holds out hope that the Tau can be redeemed. Indeed, one Firecast commander has seen the Ethereals for what they were and has revolted, taking a few Tau colonies as well. This commander is named Farsight by his adoring troops, and has opened diplomatic ties with the Imperium, and in return he has been promised support for the inevitable counterattack from his misguided kin. Coming from a remote planet, maybe not even in the Milky Way galaxy, the Tyranids were first encountered on the Imperial world of Tyran. The Imperium's initial contact with the Tyranids was relatively peaceful, although Imperial diplomats were somewhat unnerved by the aliens' bizarre appearance and strangely designed vessels. The Tyranids seemed to sense this unease and, very politely, requested to take some DNA samples from the lifeforms on Tyran in order to further their research. After some negotiation, the humans agreed, and the Tyranids left peacefully, seeming to disappear from the galaxy without a trace. About two centuries later, the Tyranids returned in the form of a Genesis fleet, a large convoy of living vessels which seeded barren worlds with bizarre and beautiful forms of life. Wherever the Genesis fleet went, dozens of meticulously crafted biospheres were left behind, each one hospitable to humanity and full of fascinating wildlife. This went on until the Genesis fleet finally met with other Imperial diplomats again. Taking new human-like forms, the diplomats explained that they were a race of bioengineers and terraformers, seeking to study the life forms of the universe and use the genetic data to create the perfect planet. After some more negotiation, the Terrans were granted the right to populate a select desolate planets on the outskirts of Imperial territory however they saw fit. While most prefer to travel with the Genesis fleet, some Tyranids have settled in the Imperium, taking forms more familiar to humanity by mixing its DNA with their own. These Tyranids find great success in serving as botanists, naturalists, or ecologists, but some do make use of their race mastery of the double helix. These are so-called gene merchants, and they collect data from plants, animals, and even citizens using their bio-wizardry to cure disease and maintain the balance of local ecosystems. Some gene merchants have reportedly ensconced themselves in space hulks, cultivating gardens and aviaries while fighting off pirates and hostile aliens, as they try to modify the derelict vessels to provide aid to strangers and wayward travelers. Now, you might also be wondering what happened to the original traitor legions of 40k. Well, the Order Marines, as they are known here, are a splinter group of space marines which were created during the Horus Migration. After communication with the Order Gods, Warmaster Horus and several other Primarchs decided to travel into the Eye of Harmony to better communicate with their allies. Ever since, they have sometimes reappeared in order to help beleaguered planets. The five of the legions are sighted across the galaxy, and their assistance is always invaluable to the Imperium. The Legion of Mortarion, the Death Guard, are some of the finest battlefield medics that the Imperium has seen, while Angron's World Eaters are the protectors of the weak and the innocent. The Emperor's children, led by Fulgrim, are often sighted alongside the Iron Warriors, helping to repair and rebuild cities after a battle. 
Despite being potent sorcerers on the battlefield, the Thousand Sons take after their allied Sinj and help coordinate battlefield tactics. Most respected of all though is the White Legion, currently led by Abaddon the Rebuilder. This legion is in fact a coalition of many, and they engage in many humanitarian activities. Finally, we can't say goodbye without saying a few words about the Emperor. This guy is so awesome that the entire galaxy bows to him willingly. He was created in the distant past by countless warp shamans coming together to form a single being, that he might be able to guide all humanity to a brighter tomorrow. After the disastrous war with the Men of Iron from the Dark Age of Technology, the Emperor led this newly created force of noble knights known as Space Marines on a crusade to rebuild the galaxy. In battle, he is a warrior without peer, a psyker powerful enough to create a supernova and a tactician beyond measure. In battle, he wields a mighty hammer of light, which channels his formidable powers as a psyker into pure destructive energy with each blow. He has been known to lend this hammer to the mightiest adventurers on the direst of missions, and it has been at the forefront of many victories at the hands of humanity. He also personally started the tradition of showing rank by wearing gigantic hats, due to his own habit of wearing a golden giant sombrero. The sombrero also has two life-sized golden eagles which shoot plasma bolts out of their eyes, and the weight of it is so great that it would instantly snap the neck of anyone who tried to wear it. At the end of the day, he is quite similar to the Warhammer 40k Emperor, but this one never battled Horus with his son instead peacefully ascending to a higher plane of existence. Instead, he rules the galaxy benevolently from the Golden Throne, but obviously he is not stuck to it. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the utterly evil and despicable Tau, the eco-friendly Tyranids, and the benevolent Emperor for today. Like I mentioned at the beginning, this is also the last episode on the bizarre world of Brighthammer 40k. And although many might see it as unnatural, including myself, it is still very funny, and I hope you enjoyed it. As for the next chapter in our humor series, I might tackle another alternate reality. Or maybe even do the Dornian Heresy, although that one is not exactly funny. Do share your thoughts on these 40k opposites of today if you want in the comments below. If you found the episode entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content, or you can visit my Patreon page if you want to support the channel more directly. Thanks a lot and have an awesome healthy day. The Emperor Protects.